Hello, welcome to lesson one of First Steps in Learning C Sharp, brought to you by Protopic and Railgun Systems. My name's Roy Fisher. What I'm going to do in this course is give you the whirlwind tour of C Sharp so that you can understand the basic features. As time develops, we'll take these features and expand and extend them. I'll be using Visual Studio 2012 in these courses. Irrespective of what system you're using, the language C Sharp will come out exactly the same. I'm now going to load Visual Studio. And we're going to not look at this in any great detail, but start off with a new project. And our new project in Visual C Sharp will be a console application. Console applications are a great way to learn about a language, in this case, C Sharp. So that's what Visual Studio gives us. At the moment, it's not very useful, but it will run. Won't do anything interesting, but it will run. And that's half the battle. So what I'm going to do is put a couple of lines in here. Console dot write. And you'll see as I'm typing is that Visual Studio offers me options here. I'm going to use the down arrow key to select right line and press the tab key. Notice that the full word comes in. And my initial writing of write had a small w. It now has a a large W. It's important to know is that C-sharp is case sensitive. This may be a shock to some Visual Basic programmers, but for C programmers they'll be quite happy. And I'm going to type in that famous old has-to-be-used program, Hello World. C-sharp statements require a semicolon at the end. And I'll press Enter. What that line will do will give us an output on a screen. What we have to do, of course, is to make sure we can read that. So I'm going to use another line here, which will provide us a kind of wait for the key press. OK. I'm now going to run this program. When I run it, it pulls up a console window, which is at my other screen. I've pulled it across. You can see, hello world, exactly as we had it inside these quotes here. That's a literal string. And a flashing cursor. Basically, it says, press any key, or at least in my head it does. So, let's look now at these five lines of code which Visual Studio gave us for gratis at the beginning. As I hover over them, we see that each of these lines refers to a thing called a namespace. We shall examine this in more detail as time goes on, but for the moment I will simply comment out this first line with a slash slash, forward slash, forward slash, which in C-sharp, as in C, is a single line comment. The compiler will ignore this. Notice after doing this that the word consoles now have a red squiggle in them. Red squiggles are not generally good. If I just hover over it, it tells me, essentially, in different words, that it doesn't know what console means. So if I try and run this program, do a start, it will tell me there's a build error. This program will not compile and we have two errors. Both of them exactly the same origin. It doesn't understand the word console. So, rather than remove that single line comment up there, I'll put the word system in. System followed by a dot. And when I do that, the green line, the red line, sorry, apologies, the red line turns into a blue line. If I try and run this now, it will give me errors. I will say no, but now we only have one. And that one is on that line there. I double click that and that gave me the line which was in error. So I'll repeat what I did above, system dot. So still got a blue line but I think if we run this and we pull across my console window everything is exactly as it should be, well at the moment. So we can see that we either can use this namespace called system top of our program, or we have to type out a more expansive name for the console method. Think of a method as a procedure or a subroutine. C Sharp is an object-oriented language. Object-oriented languages use classes extensively. And in a class, we don't tend to have procedures and subroutines called as such. We call them methods. They're basically the workers of the whole game. There are thousands of classes, literally, within the .NET framework, within C-sharp. These using statements, these namespaces at the top, 
they allow us to be able to name a method without going through a big long predecessor set of system, consoles, collections, blah 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 and so on. It can get lines of code can be yay long. By using namespaces we can make them that long. Apart from the predetermined the, uh, the system uh, namespaces that are created for us, we also make our own namespaces. Uh, here's one made automatically from the name of the program. Remember we called it lesson. We can actually have namespaces inside here. We can make namespaces within namespaces, but more namespaces at a future date. We want to now for the moment just get back to where we started from. And we'll do that by removing the slash slash single line comment and because it's unnecessary and makes our code that wee bit longer and the longer it writes the longer it takes and the longer it reads so back to where we were just to double check that let's run it let's pull across our console window and press the enter key in response to the read line method okay what I'm now going to do is look at uh, some of the other parts of the language uh, we can see here many different things in blue the words using, the word namespace, the word class, static, void, string, and we'll see lots more as time goes on. These are all part of the C-sharp collection of keywords. There's probably about 80 odd of them, in, uh, of which you maybe use 20 or 30 uh, commonly. We certainly don't have to learn the whole language because C-sharp is, is potentially massive. Well, it's actually massive but you can only use a small subset to do 99% of what you need. Anyway, let's continue. What I'm now going to do is, is hover over this right line to see some of the information. And if you look at the first line of the, of the text that comes below it, it says plus 18 overloads. One of the keys about object-orientated programming is that you can have overloaded methods. And essentially, it's saying is that there's 19 different ways of writing this right line method. Well, that's fine. Um, we will discover how to use that as time goes on. So there's 19 of them there, and that seems to be pretty well alone. And what I'm going to do is to take one step further. I'm going to make us a variable. I'm going to make it now a new blue piece of code which says that's a keyword in C sharp string and I'm going to call a variable my string string my string and I'm going to do that so what I've done here is I've declared a variable called my string of type string and as you can see here that string comes from a namespace itself it's system dot string it's a class we'll worry about that later we'll worry about unicode characters as well later so what we have is a green squiggle under my string it's not blue it's not red it's green and what does it mean it says that the variable my string is declared but never used well uh, i think we can still run this program it's telling us bad programming mate. I'm going to pull my console program or my console window over and it says as before the program runs just fine. Our program runs just fine of course but it still have that green squiggle. It's basically saying is you're not a very good programmer. Well I knew that. Maybe it's the problem is I haven't given my string a value. Let's just try that. My string equals put my quotation marks by double quotes and I'll say hello goodness me love those caps lock sausage fingers hello world semicolon okay so what I've done here is I've created the variable called string I've given it a value I've assigned it a value with the equals operator that still doesn't seem to be happy but it's green so I know it will run so what do I do well I've created it, I've given it a value, ah, I've not used it. Let's use it. And I'm going to change the text inside this string here and say your message, oh, I've done it again, oh dear, 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 Musk divorce caps lock, your 
message is and then I put in a placeholder I put in a curly bracket zero I'll explain this in a moment and then I use an overloaded method one of the 19 of which we've used one already and I'll type in my string okay all the squiggles have gone essentially what's happened here is I've put I've changed the arguments inside the brackets of the right line method that's an overload of the right line method I'm going to run this and see the effect so run pull over my console window and there we see your message is hello world well that seems to make sense it makes sense if you think of the numbering system in C sharp the first uh, value in a list starts at index 0 unlike basic which normally starts at 1 remember that C sharps lists start at the number 0 so it's saying the zeroth value after the string goes in this space if I want I can actually type in etc etc I can put stuff oh, etc etc or run our program pull our console window over and we can see that I can add text before and after the placeholder so I'll press enter and I'll now create a second variable and we'll call this same type as before string and we'll call it my second string and this time instead of just declaring it we'll give it a value at the same time we can do this in C sharp and I'll just put again and again and put my semicolon click on here it's got the, the familiar green squiggle again it says you've, you've designed it, you've made it, you've given it a value but you ain't used it well I will in a moment I'm just going to copy this value, save my typing my sausage fingers, comma, control V and things seem to be happy uh, happy in a sense but the green lines have gone but maybe it's not doing what I want let's run and check yep we don't see the words again and again appearing because we haven't told it so I need to have something in here I need to have the placeholder it's the second variable so the first one was zero so this is going to be one let's put the placeholder in and now let's run our program and run across here and your message is hello world etc and then again and again etc it does compute good okay so what we've looked at so far uh, we've looked at declaring and uh, giving a value and using a value we've also used a couple of methods of the console class which is part of the system collection or system namespace one last thing before we go is the use of this word main here every C sharp program if it's going to run at all must have a method called main what static and void mean and what the string arguments are will be just grist for a, a future date before we go, let's have one more last look at the structure of our C program. I'm going to roll up this program. We can see at this level there are two parts of our program: a system of, uh, sorry, a collection of uh, namespaces that are put in that we can put in ourselves or are put in by the system, and a namespace which has the name of the program. When I open up the namespace, we can see that it's a container for something called a class, a class program. In fact, we can have many classes inside here and many other things. When I open up the class, we see the class has one method in it, a method called main, the start point of the program, capital M, remember. Uh, we could have a number of different methods and various other things inside here. When I open up main, we can see the code body of main itself. 
So that concludes today's lesson. For the next lesson, we'll be taking a look at more variables and variable types, and we'll be looking at how to make decisions within the C-sharp language. Until then, goodbye.